if you walk through the aisles, you probably have seen people wearing these. Um, this actually has been provided by Samsung and, and thanks again, we have over 50 of these um, in the plane and we want to, to uh, make virtual reality as accessible as to m as many people as possible. Now just to give you like the quick demo what we're talking about, what's really cool about this thing is that it's using a, a normal mobile phone as a screen. So basically you just snap it in and you can totally immerse yourself into virtual reality. Uh, what we have on board is actually exciting Lufthansa content, so 360 degree views of destinations, of Lufthansa hangars, um, nice stuff that you can totally immerse yourself. So if you have a chance, try it out, just walk through the, the aisle, you will see people. And we also actually have three people from Samsung on board, you can easily spot them um, with their badges saying Samsung and, and grab them. Um, it is an exciting technology. and. Um, yeah, we will see pretty much uh, new innovation coming up this year around this. Now, one company that basically was really pushing technology always on the forefront uh, with marketing is Mercedes-Benz. And we're really happy to have someone with us um, today. You ready, Daniel? Ready? <laughs> Here we go. So... A very warm welcome. If you could get to... I'm going to swipe over here. So right. here we are. So thanks for joining, Nathanael. Thank you for the invitation. Um, you're running brand communications for Mercedes-Benz. That's true. Happy to have you on board. Actually, uh, uh, Mercedes is one of those companies who have a really nice outpost in the Silicon Valley. Can you share a little bit what you're doing there? Uh, actually, uh, or let's say traditionally, we do have um, some guys out there that work quite closely together with all the R&D guys in the Silicon Valley. So we try to pick up the latest uh, trends, we try to pick up the latest ideas and to see how we can incorporate them in our cars. And I guess that works quite well. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and uh, you, you've seen a presentation from Thorsten, he was talking about virtual reality. Now I've seen on your profile that you actually in the 90s done product placements if I got it right. That's true, that's true. I was in charge of one of the very first product placements when we, that we did from the headquarters. So that was the M class in the famous movie Jurassic Park ah. Lost World. So you put an M class into Jurassic Park, into that's true. Hollywood. So seeing virtual reality, thinking about it, will we see a virtual Mercedes one day? To be very honest, we are working on that. And ah. we do have even an idea um, in what kind of movie we want to place a virtual car. So nice. I can't give all the details right now, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing. Cool. So yeah, virtual reality, it will be something that's going to be quite big this year. There will be tons of devices coming out, for instance, from Sony. Um, Oculus Rift is finally available, etc. Um, so it will take some time to actually be adopted to mainstream, um, we assume. But there is one platform that is certainly mainstream, which is Instagram. Um, currently over 500 million people are using it. And it's quite exciting to actually have a brand there who is using Instagram. So without further ado, um, I give the word to you. And we're really, really looking forward to see what you guys are doing with Instagram. Thank, Thank you very you. much. So a very warm welcome from my side as well. Um, I'm really happy to talk to you about what we do on Instagram and how we use Instagram as a platform to bring out our messages and to engage our customers and our prospects with our brand. So I want to give you an idea on what is Instagram. I think most of you do know it. Instagram is a huge, huge pla platform with over 500 million uh, users currently. And we are one of the very first ones who used this platform to carry out our messages. So, to give you an idea on what we mean by bringing out our messages and what we mean by carrying out that kind of content that we believe is engaging, is relevant to our target group, I just want to show you a graph. And this graph will show you quite clearly that within the automotive segment, we do cover approximately one-fourth of all the postings. But the much more important thing is that we do cover more than 50% of our engagements. So out of all the engagements that take place on Instagram, we do carry out more than 50%. 
that is a huge success and we are very proud of that and we are also very happy about it. But we also want to ensure that it stays like this. And I want to give you an idea on why it is, what it is and what are the key success factors on that. So we started to be on Instagram very early. It was in 2012 where we started our story on Instagram, where we did the first postings and we were like one of the front runners, one of the early movers in that segment. One of them who started to post something without knowing if the platform will work out well or not. So in 2013, we did the first shootout at a Frankfurt Motor Show. As you might imagine, for us as a car manufacturer, a German car manufacturer, the Frankfurt Motor Show is one of the most important and most impressive shows that we do run. And we took the very first time um, some bloggers, some photographs out there, photographers, I'm sorry, out there on our booth and we invited them to do some shootings, be it by day or by night, and to bring them online. It worked out very well and we started to enlarge our engagement on this, on this platform and we started to do things like a road trip or in 2015 we did an extremely successful new format because we invited photographers to do some shootings by night. So during the Frankfurt Motor Show at our booth we said okay we want to invite you to go there do the best shootings in the best angles in the most unseen angles that you can imagine and try to put these pics on your accounts and it worked very well so we had over 1 million people watching it and we had an engagement rate that was incredible so how do we do that we try to use two major let's say inputs one of them are photographers and multipliers, bloggers, influencers. And we try to ask them to, g to give us their best picks in terms of brand loving material. So what do we mean by that? We ask our photographers to come up with those photos, with those picks that show people that love the brand, that love our products. We also call it from time to time car palm. Sounds a little bit weird, but it is what it is in the very end. It is a focus 100% on the car, and that works extremely well. On the other hand, it's very, 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 very important that we do come up with authentic material. And that's the reason why we also use our internal staff to carry out messages and to carry out their most beloved pics. So we have, for example, engineers that do post a lot. We do have, for example, people out of the motorsports team that do post a lot. And we have also designers that do post a lot. So it's real authentic material. And we do know that it works extremely well. And to engage our customers, we need a lot of customers that love our content, they, that feel like this content is really relevant and that are willing to share this content and to love this content. So we have a huge variety of content that we do use and we have for sure also our own content because believe it or not, only 5% of the content that we do carry out on Instagram is really brand related content that is developed also in the headquarters. So for example, if you do have a TVC, um, we do cut it down to 15 seconds. If you do have an ad, we try to change the format from a landscape format into a one-by-one -one format. And even if you go on a fair and exhibition, we try to use the pre-night as some kind of a pre-show that we do run on Instagram. So we really want to make sure that on these new channels like Instagram and many others, those people that use these channels those people that are engaged in these channels, they do have really a first-hand experience with the brand. So, beside all that, we do also be open, we do have to be open to other and new formats. For example, some press formats. Um, in the meanwhile, we have a couple of quite well-known um, social media gurus, let's call it that way, like Guy Kawasaki, um, who are really willing to work together with us 
and to post a lot of things in our name on our website or on our uh, social media channel, in that case, Instagram. That works very well. These people have a huge fan base and this fan base also helps that we can encourage other people to think about posting things on the Mercedes channel. Bringing all that together, we are sure that we can come up with a lot of new material, unseen material, material that comes from Mercedes fans and delivers picks to Mercedes fans. Um, another major implication is the amplification. Because we do want to want not only carry out things on our channels, but we also want to bring our ambassadors, and we have quite a lot of ambassadors with the brand Mercedes-Benz, that they use their own Instagram channels to carry out our messages. For example, our head of design, Gordon Wagner, he has in the meanwhile approximately 40,000 followers because for sure he has the content everybody is looking for. He has the content people want to see. He has the insights in what's coming up in the design, in the design department, what's going to come up with our, within the next five years or maybe 10 years. So if he gives our customers some kind of a glimpse, it helps not only on his own channel, but we can carry that images also on our Mercedes-Benz channels. That is content that is relevant, that is interesting, and that is also engaging. And that's the most important factor that we have as a brand Mercedes on the channel, social media channel Instagram. So some of you might ask, so how does it work? How do you come up with all these contents? It's not that we produce all of it. As mentioned already, we have a system with a lot of freelancers that work for us. And 95% of all our content is not delivered by us or produced by us, but for example, by 150 photographers that we do have worldwide. And these photographers, they do go out they do a lot of shootings, they send in a lot of pics and we can, in our social media house, we can pick out those pics that are really important for us and where we really believe these pics will be engaging. So it is a system of curating the content that comes in from our, from our channels and picking out the right stuff that has been sent in through our photographers that work for us worldwide. So what do we mean by that? For example, if we do send out photographers to work for us and to send us, as, as we call it, some car porn pictures. Sounds weird, but again, focus is on the car, focus is on the product. As we do know, this works the very best on our channels. So what do we do? We do have a couple of cars that we do carry out all over the world. We do send them all over the world, we ship them worldwide and we deliver these cars to our photographers. The photographers, for example, have then the chance to use the car for like three days, four days, five days and we ask them, okay, if you want to have the car, you have to deliver photos. And the photos they deliver are either completely free, there is no briefing, there is no clear message and we try to pick out the nicest one, the, beautiful, the, the most beautiful ones, or we give them a clear briefing what we need. And then we send them out and we tell them, okay, send in your best pics, and the photographers are very willing to send their pics because they do know if the pics are shared on our channels due to our reach that we do have, and due to the fact that we're gonna mention the photographer underneath our pics, they have the chance to become more famous. So, it's a, so it is some kind of a win-win situation that we do face on our Instagram channel together with all our colleagues and all our photographers that we have out there. Another very brand new idea that we had was we even, let's say, closed the whole channel for any kind of internal material. And we gave it over to one photographer where we believed he understood exactly what we need and he knows exactly what the barriers are. So we had a couple of days ago, we had a huge photo shooting, filming on a track with our 
um, with our race drivers and one of the photographers was able to run our Instagram channel the whole day. So we didn't put any other material on that channel, but we said, okay, you know what are the borders, what are the barriers, and you know what we want to see. You are the one who's going to run this channel for today. And it worked out, it, it worked out pretty, pretty well, and it was really, really successful because um, all of a sudden, within the community, everybody was talking about it. Mercedes-Benz doesn't control 100% what happens out there. In fact, we did control it, but the photographer was the one who ran our channel, and it worked out pretty well. Let me give you another idea what we do. For example, we have to come up to stay interesting, to stay somehow relevant within our customer group. We have to come up with new formats that are surprising, different. Um, one of the formats that worked out pretty well, you can see it here on the slide on the, on the left side, is our shootout that we did in our Europa Park. We do have a cooperation with this roller coaster park. And in this roller coaster park, we said, okay, we're going to invite 20 photographers one night. And it's like a child's dream. You have a bunch of cars. You can go out. You can do shootings. You can see whatever you want to see or whatever you wanted to see as a child. And you can produce that. Because in this roller coaster park, you have also a lot of theme parks and in these theme parks you can place the car and all of a sudden it's like a child's dream that happens it's your most beloved car in a scenery that is exactly there only for you and the photographer can do whatever he wants with the car with the theme in the theme park and he will provide us with a lot of new content another format that worked very well you can see it on the right side of the slides um, is our shootout in the museum. Some of you might know we have a very, very famous museum that we have like 700, 800,000 um, visitors a year. But this museum is not only from the architectural part very interesting, it's also very interesting due to the fact that we do have on show like 120 cars all the time. 120 cars from the inventor of the car means 130 years of automobile history. And we invited photographers to come out one night and to do a shootout. And we wanted to carry out some kind of a challenge, a challenge between the photographers to see who's gonna get the most likes in the social media world. And also this format worked out extremely well. So we try to stay innovative, we try to stay very interesting for our customers and we try to come up always with new formats and with new ideas how we can fill new content that is relevant and especially engaging in this Instagram channel. For sure these are the very innovative formats but we also have typical cooperative formats and one of them is for example with the state of Baden-Württemberg what is the area where our headquarters um, are located in, or for example with the clothing brand Hugo Boss, or also with Lufthansa, as we do see right now here. So, I just wanted to bring you some ideas of what kind of pictures, what kind of content we do post. And here on this slide you can see some of our most famous postings. You wonder why? Actually, due to the likes due to the uh, yeah, feedback of our customers, of our prospects that are on our, on our social media channels, that watch them, that follow them. Um, you might want to imagine what is the most famous pic that you can see on that slide. I assume a lot of you would say it's maybe the young mechanic underneath the car. Actually, it's for sure the youngest mechanic I ever met. But it's not a fact. It's also not the young guy in this beautiful, long, uh, b beautiful uh, small Mercedes in front of Dad's Mercedes. No, it's not him. Funny enough, the keys. The keys are, the, are one of the most favorite picks that we ever had. You ask me why, I have no clue. 
I have to say. I have no clue. But it's not a problem as long as we can carry out a lot of other messages. I don't mind if a bunch of keys laying down on the floor is one of the most favorite picks that we ever had. So, what are the, re what are the results of all of that? For sure, as mentioned already in the very beginning, we do cover more than 50% of the engagements within the automotive industry. Second, we are number two behind Nike, right after Nike. And third, and that is the most important part, we do have a reach of approximately 250 million per month. And that is, for a brand like Mercedes, very, very important because we want our customers to be engaged with the brand. Because as an old industry br a brand and an old industry product, we have one big problem, and that is we only got in contact with our customers twice. In the morning, when the customer drives to the office, and in the evening, if the customer drives back from the office. So these are the only two parts of a day where our customer get in touch with our products. So we decided we wanna dominate also within the automotive industry our social media channels because we wanna make sure that the customer gets in touch much more than only twice a day with the brand. Okay, what are the key success factors for that? Let me give you an idea on what are the KPIs. For sure, it is the artistry, for sure, it is the connection to any kind of very important themes that happen right now. It is the amplification. It is for sure emotion, some media budget as well. We have to say what it is. And in the very end, using the data. So let me give you on a couple of these some ideas on how we deal with that. First of all, successful pictures. Where do they come from? Car porn, as mentioned already, the car is the hero. We want to make the car the hero, the product is the hero. We want to focus on it. We don't want to talk too much about any other things. We want to stay with what we know we can do the best, and that is the product. Second, come up with picks that are somehow surprising. In the center, you can see, and let's say a little bit older woman, um, furying up her C63 AMG. A C63 AMG, for those of you who don't know what it is, it is a car that comes with over 500 horses and it's not very typical, it's quite unusual to have an older lady showing up at a, at a fuel station and fueling its car as long as it is not a typical Mercedes but a quite sporty one. So these pics run very well on the Instagram account. Other picks that work very well are those picks that deal with emotions, with dreams. On the left side you can see an interior shot and in the outside you see a part of Dubai. This is a shot everybody admires, everybody wants to see, everybody um, starts immediately dreaming about what it is like to be somewhere in Dubai driving a beautiful Mercedes on a beautiful day in a beautiful weather these are the picks that work extremely well. And giving, the, giving our uh, customers or prospects some insights that are not visible to everyone. In the center you can see a pic that was, that was done um, right one day before the opening of the Frankfurt Motor Show. So we gave our customers already an insight before the official show began. These are the picks that work very well and as mentioned already, authentic picks. On the right side, you might wonder what it is. It is a typical car pick, it is, but it's 100% authentic. There is no CGI, no retouching. It is done exactly in the way how the customer has seen it. What we do as well, we try to jump on as the very first ones on new formats, being advertising formats or be it any kind of new social media platforms. And we were the very first ones um, that run with Instagram, for example, an ad campaign in the, Euro in the European area. And we want to be the very first ones who run an ad campaign in Germany as well, as Germany is our headquarter. Yes, for sure, we want to be somehow in a, in a kind of front runner modus on that. So, connect things 
to any kind of actual, uh, let's say, uh, themes that happen out there, any kind of news that happen out there. Some of you might know that on October 21st last year, it was the day that was a very important day at the, at the Back to the Future um, movie trilogy, I think. I think we've seen like three of them. And we had the idea to connect this little, let's say, um, group of people that love to talk about these films, that love to talk about this uh, trilogy, and to carry out our message with that and to, go and, and to combine both. And what we did, you can see it here. I think like you've never seen somebody walking, walking the dog in that way, but maybe this, this is something that will come up in the future and maybe also in the near future. So what is our content strategy right now? We have our social media house and we try to fill or to manage all our postings firsthand on those channels that work the best. Instagram is currently one of the best working channels and that's the reason why we do our content what we call Instagram first. That means we try to use the formats that are useful for Instagram and after that then we carry out the same content for example on Twitter, on Facebook, even on our smart TV app or maybe on our website as well. So we don't produce any more contents mainly for TV or print but we also produce a lot of content that is really focusing 100% on social media channels. As a headquarter, for sure, everybody believes we do carry all or we do uh, think only about our headquarter channels. No. Due to our social media house that we have built up, we also carry out all these messages in our sales organizations in various markets as well, all the way down to the retail dealerships. So we want to ensure that there is a consistent flow of messages and picks that we have from the headquarter all the way down to the sales organization as well to our local dealerships all around the world. And, it, and that works pretty, pretty well as long as we can orchestrate it from the headquarters. So that was a part of what we do on Instagram. I wanted to give you a little insight on what we do and I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, that's the reason why, I, why I've in included this little button, questions. There is no chance right now to ask me, but I'm still another six or seven hours on the flight. So if everybody, anybody has a question, feel free to ask me and, I'm, and I would more than love to one. answer it. <laughs> so Max, come one. on. So, <laughs> so what, I would be, what would be the question? I take this opportunity, but uh, first of all, thanks a lot. That was really, in really, really a lot of insights into uh, Instagram. That was amazing. So thanks for that. You just had it Instagram first on a slide. So what second? What second? Uh, depending on. I mean, it can always uh, happen that things change. Yeah. For example, there are some new um, social media channels that uh, can become very famous. Yeah. Some of them are. Uh, let's mention them. Yeah. Some of them could be, for example, Snapchat. Yeah. Have you done something on Snapchat? Oh yeah, we, we yeah? work already on Snapchat because our idea is to be among the very first ones to yeah. jump on new social media channels and then to figure out if they work or not. Mm -hmm. And if they work, then we're going to widen our engagement there. If not, then we're going to reduce it again. Okay. And um, I mean, you're not only running digital marketing. I mean, you're running global brand and adver uh, brand advertising, yes. product advertising, yes. but also the physical stuff like retail, the trade shows, the fairs. That's true. What kind of role is digital playing currently there? Actually, a more and more important one. And yeah. digital is not only, let's say, digital for itself, but digital is, 
is in the meanwhile everywhere. Yeah. So even on the auto show, we are discussing to come up with completely new formats where we can, let's say, change the whole um, the whole show into a much more digital driven show. And we do have some ideas, and we're gonna come up with that quite soon. Oh, okay. I'm excited. Um, final question. Um, I mean, this setup is really unusual. I guess that's also unusual for you standing here. In that's the okay. <laughs> I mean, that has not been possible five years ago. Now, the that's next true. five years, um, as a marketeer, where, where do you see yourself in five years? Do you have any glimpse of the future that you can share? Um, it's going to be quite interesting, to be very honest. If you would have asked me five years ago if, if I would ever do a presentation in socks, <laughs> I have to say, most likely I would have said no. No one sees it. Yeah. No, one, no one sees it below. <laughs> but actually, yeah, it's my very first presentation in socks. So, no, but you're wearing no, shorts, right? Like, I, uh, uh, actually, no, no. So keep the camera up there. Yeah, yeah, we, don't up, wanna, we, we don't want to talk about no that shorts. now. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, no, but honestly, um, I think... Um, with all the, let's say, I hate this word in the meanwhile, but with all the digital disruption that we do see right now, I think it's quite hard to say what's going to happen in the next five yeah. years. It's already, let's say, much more interesting to figure out what's happening in one year or in two years, yeah. in two years' time, and how we can adopt as a brand to it. Yeah. yeah. So we have to stay very agile, very flexible, and we have to see and to pick up the trends very fast and to see if they are important for us or not. Yeah. So um, I think things like virtual reality, uh, augmented, re augmented reality, these are things that will come up more and more. Artificial intelligence, yeah. we do have already some ideas how to deal with that and how to incorporate that in our communication. And I think... Um, the most exciting times are let's say ahead of us. Ahead, ahead of, of us, us, definitely. Yeah. That's true. Since many years, they are ahead of us, yeah, and it keeps, it keeps it keeps innovating. Going. It keeps and going. And you just mentioned augmented reality. I mean, just thinking about Microsoft Hololens. I mean, amazing possibilities, blending unbelievable reality with an alternate reality. With unbelievable, virtual, so. unbelievable. And if you just think of um, what was like a dream five yeah. ye five years ago, and you see what's happening today, what is possible today. You feel like oh, even um, our 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 good old friend um, uh, Orville, yeah, <laughs> he had a quite good idea of what happens in the future. And I think if you do see today some of these science fiction ideas, where, where we feel like completely visionary, completely mind blowing, yeah. yeah, who knows? In five years, maybe ten years, maybe even in twenty years, they will become reality. Yeah, and in our industry, for example, um, who was ever thinking 10, 15 years ago that we're going to talk really, and let's say, in a real case, not just a, as a possibility that can happen, that in five years' time it could happen that we're going to have a lot of autonomous driving cars out there. Yep. Yeah, That would change the experience of driving a car 100%. It Absolutely. will change it upside down. The yep. very first time in life, driving car will not take your time but give you additional quality time so this will also disrupt our industry again and so there are a lot of amazing times ahead of us and i'm looking forward to it me it's going to be a lot too. of fun me too so thank you very much for that you have another film with you you want to show it or i have another film that just summarizes everything i said and so it's if you want to keep it 30 minutes long or uh, no 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 it's only like 90 90 seconds so Perfect. if you want to run it Let's yeah, run it. Let's, let's run let's it. have a look at it. And thank you very much for having I, I, me. I thank you and enjoy the rest of your flights. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. <laughs> Mercedes-Benz on Instagram, a best case content strategy. Instagram is a platform with enormous potential due to widespread organic reach, high interaction rates and a fast growing young community. Mercedes-Benz recognized this trend early on and developed a unique content strategy around it. Real content is the best content, and that's more true on Instagram than on any other platform. The Mercedes-Benz content strategy harnesses the automotive passion of fans and puts it to work for the channel. The Mercedes-Benz Instagram channel has become a vibrant real-life community platform. A worldwide operating network of more than 150 photographers, influencers and fans make up the global Instagram community. 
actively helping to shape the channel through user-generated content. Content from real fans for real fans. The community is also given an exclusive look behind the scenes at special events and campaign productions featuring exciting partnerships. And the high quality content produced there is shared across other platforms. The result, a personal, authentic and unique channel experience with industry leading performance without demanding a high level of resources. The number of followers is growing rapidly both nationally and around the globe. With a reach of more than a quarter billion per month, Mercedes-Benz belongs to the top three Instagram brands worldwide. Mercedes-Benz on Instagram, a global best case made in Germany.